Welcome to Army Fitness, my name is Dwayne and I'm your host. Today I'm interviewing Dave Watkins, personal trainer turned online coach. I'm going to be asking him how he managed to transform his business from the physical to the virtual world and how he's excelled in it. We're also going to be speaking about his own personal journey in health and wellness and what he's up to nowadays in terms of his physical fitness routine and his daily routines and what advice he's got for all of us to be the healthiest, best physical version of ourselves. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Welcome to the IMF podcast. Dave Watkeys, you're our guest today. Yes. Thanks for coming. No, thanks for having me. I feel like this is where my fitness career kind of really blossomed when I was here for my limited time. What is it, one year here and then moved on. But yeah, thank you for having me back. It's a big honor. Awesome to mm. see you again, especially under the circumstances. Mm. I thought today we could uh, share some of our knowledge uh, on the fitness industry. Uh, well, I want to talk really about how coronavirus affected you in terms of your business because I was talking to you off camera and my initial thought was wow online would have boomed yeah and you were just telling me completely opposite so mm. just run me through what happened what happened in your mind and what yeah. happened in your business so you heard about it or I think it was like the 26th of March or whatever mm. what went on yes yeah, so obviously we heard that gyms are closing so like we quickly went and filmed content to structure like home training plans because we thought okay well you know make sure the clients are looked after make sure they've got something to do. To be honest, I didn't think it would go on long as it did. I don't know if you had the same thought, but when they said three weeks, I was like, oh, it's probably going to be six. You know, so like we don't need to stress too much. Um, so I thought I'd be safe-ish, but you know, in those first two weeks, I had a huge amount of clients leave overnight without warning, which is obviously always scary um, to suddenly have your, you know, your turnover cut when you've not done anything wrong. You've always provided good service and stuff like that. So that was a bit of a shock and it took me it took me like a few weeks to recover from that in terms of, you know, I did the worst thing possible. I just froze. I was like, you know, I don't know what to do. Don't know how to handle this and uh, crumbled a bit mentally. <laughs> but then, you know, you, 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 you realize you start dealing with it. You realize that if you keep quiet and you don't put yourself out there, you know, it's just going to keep going backwards. So then, you know, you have to pivot. And then things started picking up towards the middle. And now, we're well, not at the end now, but um, things are recovering nicely again. People are realizing that, you know, it's not the end of the world. And also looking after yourself is still in my books, one of the primary, you know, top goals in your life. So people have started signing up. They're making do with what they have. You know, a lot of people are under the assumption like, oh, you know, I'm only going to sign up once the gym's open. But I mean, you know, I trained without weights for like 10 weeks, just use bands. And, you know, my physique went a little bit backwards, but... I still think I looked all right. And you see a lot of clients, you know, finding ways to buy equipment from anywhere, doing what they can at home. And, you know, it's, it's just a matter of some people are willing to still invest in themselves, whether it be with me or just on their own. And some people are just quite happy to kind of drift. So, yeah, it's recovered now nicely. Um, and I think things are just going to progress from here. I think there's never going to be a more... Um, you know, a repeat of this time where people are more uncomfortable than this now. You know, you've been sitting for three months or whatever the case may be, you really want to change. So I think gyms, personal trainers, online trainers, I think it's going to be a big boom because people are going to be in the position where they want to change really badly. Yeah. I was chatting to um, a friend of mine the other day and just saying how many people I've seen trying to get active, trying to get mm. healthy, and even friends of mine from school phoning me yeah. out the blue and being like, hey, I need to change my lifestyle, like, can you give me advice? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for us in the gym industry, when we heard about it, we, we also, you know, you get that initial panic, and it's like, okay, now we go mm. into fight mode. Yeah. How can we survive this? Yeah. And it's, you do whatever you need, you can yeah. do, because we had train. so personal trainers were really hit in the biggest Yeah, way. personal trainers, I fell for those guys, still feel for them. Still shut down, yeah. So and a lot of them didn't use, you know, everything they had. Like we've we've got cell phones. You can run a business off a cell phone. Yeah, honestly, hundred percent. Um, I just try to give a lot of my guys the ability to take some equipment from the gym, give it to their clients, even if it's just a kettlebell or mm. a kettlebell and a band. Yeah. And we put little packages together to say, you know, for the same price that you were paying for your personal training yeah. in our gym. Just keep paying that price, but take all of this equipment home with you mm. and then run your sessions on Zoom or on WhatsApp yeah. call or, you know, even if you're just getting a program and chatting with your trainer via you know, a phone call exactly. or whatever, yeah. at least keep going. And some people took it on, you know. 
Mm. But we did see a lot of people also panicking and they're like, well, we can't afford these expenses and just yeah. cutting all expenses. Yeah. So, which was a big thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, gym and personal trainers, online trainers are like a luxury. So, you know, people cut it, but, um, you know, personal trainers is quite expensive. I mean, it can rack up into the few thousands a month, but I know for me, I was quite shocked because my rate's not astronomical. You know, I do have cheaper packages and stuff like this. And, you know, the thing that hit me hard was, you know, you, I don't want to insult clients or anything like that, but you sacrifice a lot of your life to provide for them. Well, not provide for them, but service them. And I found a lot of people were like, oh, Dave, you know, I know it's only a thousand bucks, let's say, but, I, you know, I just want to hold on to that. But what they don't understand is when 30 people do that and you lose 30 grand because they're all under the assumption that a thousand bucks isn't a lot, it really, you know, crashes your business sometimes. So It blows my mind because people with... When they find out what it costs to have a personal trainer or a mm. coach or a wellness coach or a business coach mm. or whatever it is, they're always trying to justify how do you pay a thousand rand, you know? And then mm. I'm like, well, you could go out with your family for one meal and it's going to cost you a thousand exactly. rand, you know, it's just for a matter you, your wife sometimes. and your two kids. Yeah. And if anything from this, we know that your wellness is the most important thing, 100%. you know, your health and the big harp on the immune system mm. and exercise, physical movement is, is crucial for your immune system. I think also mental health, you know what I mean? I know for myself, if I'm not exercising, doing something, my mental health just deteriorates. And, mm. you know, to be in lockdown and sitting in your house for two months, the only thing you could do was exercise. Even if it was body weight, I was doing body weight, but it helped. And I think a lot of people forget that exercise is like the best, you know, antidepressants or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, to neglect it is just, you're selling yourself short in every department of your life. That's always my opinion, yeah. Did you find personally that mm. when you started losing the weight because um, obviously you'd, you'd lose weight right when you drop mm. your muscle if you don't have the big weights yeah. that you said you were training with bands for yeah. roughly 10 weeks yeah did it demotivate you to eat as healthy as you were eating when you had like a consistent training plan yeah i think <laughs> i'm human you're stuck at home you're stuck with food um you know i did i did kind of let the reins loose but i'm the kind of person that doesn't go overboard you know i've I've still got some kind of sense of moderation in my life. So I probably wasn't as strict because, I mean, you needed something as an outlet, I think. You know what I mean? So I did enjoy my food, but I was really active still. You know, I was still doing, you know, one-hour workouts with bands. They were quite intense. They were quite continuous. It wasn't like weights where I, I would rest for long periods. Um, but Joe, it's, it's, I didn't go overboard, but I certainly didn't you know, hold myself to the same level that I would mm. under normal conditions, yeah. And I mean, you mentioned like your physique and you could see a difference in your physique, but you, mm. you still look pretty good. But besides the way you look, how did you feel? Did you feel any different? I mean, do you feel still healthy? Do you feel good? Did you feel better, maybe? I would say this is the fittest I've ever been because I've been doing, you know, like a six, seven K walk every morning. I've been doing, and now I've got weights available me too, lucky, luckily, during the day. And then I've also been doing Instagram live workouts at night. Um, you know, for free. So I'm training like, well not training, but doing three kind of sessions a day. I've never done that in my life, except for when I played rugby back at school. So it's been awesome for me. And also the one thing I've realized is that I was quite muscle bound before the lockdowns. You know, all I did was lift weights. It's quite one dimensional. Now I'm having to do body weight circuits, banded work, all this kind of stuff. I feel better. I can move. I don't feel so like blocky and, you know, it's opened my eyes to maybe I just need a broaden my horizons on how I approach training, not necessarily look for, you know, just aesthetics maybe, but also performance and also, you know, how you're feeling, how you're moving, if that makes sense, yeah. Very making me smile. Yeah. You know, that's a big philosophy of mine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. I like yeah. I, the resistance training is so important. Mm. You know, the way I describe it to everyone is you've got to condition your muscles to be able to move yeah. and move well yeah. in pain free, full ranges of motion. Yeah. But also have exactly. the confidence that you're not going to just get injured when you go yeah. and you lift or you're yeah. in a fight or you have to run mm. or sprint somewhere. So mm. it's so important to be strong. But then obviously consider all the things like you've just learnt and had to yes. figure out and find out. Like yeah. your fitness is so important for overall well-being. And 100%. How, how good you feel. I find I can breathe better and like my clarity of my mind's better because I'm fitter. Like it's just, it's changed a lot. So when I train with weights, I don't, it's, it's better performance now because my cardiovascular system's better. So it's been quite a, not an eye opener because I knew that there were positives to it, but I just didn't really get my ass doing those things mm. now i've been forced to do it and it's like wow i feel way better i'm looking better like in my opinion it's not that i'm 
just a muscle ball. You yeah. know what I mean? And a lot yeah. of my best friends are bodybuilders and mm. I've hung around bodybuilders for a long time. Yeah. And like, I don't know, walking with some of them just on the beach, the calves all go into cramp and you just hear mm. how out of breath they are. Yeah. And they look amazing. They yes. look like they're the picture, perfect yeah. picture of health, but like genuinely deep down inside, you've got yeah. a question, you know, how healthy yeah. are they in terms yeah. of, because you, you've got to balance it out a little 100%, bit. percent. Yeah. I think, you know, being in that industry, I think, um, the guy, people generally, if they get into the fitness industry and they compete, myself included, you're quite insecure. That's why you're doing it. Because you kind of want that validation from people. You want people to be like, ooh, look at you. You know, you're not, you haven't got that confidence to be happy with yourself. So you're always trying to maybe put on an image that's not so much you, but more so for people to see. Um, and you see with bodybuilders, they get quite comfortable and only looking one way, only doing one training style and everyone knowing them for that. It's like their identity. And like if they're scared to go for a run because they might feel a bit like a crossfit person or whatever the case may be. But um, I just find like you know, you definitely be a bit more dynamic with your training because it just complements one another. Mm. Yeah. I think bodybuilding is one of the hardest sports you can do mm. on everything. Like your yeah. mental, you're giving it's... up your lifestyle, you're giving up this. Mm. And I mean, what the guys achieve is absolutely amazing. How you can push your body to mm. that, you know, but... Um, I've tried to push my body that hard and I yeah. know how physically draining and yeah. taxing. Like there's been big days where you do a two hour leg session and you cannot do anything else that day. 100%. You, can, you go home, you've got a headache, yeah. you're lying on the couch. I mean, if you mm. really push yourself to those yeah. levels, it's you just can't even eat enough mm. calories to actually get your, your immune, it's, not even only your immune system, your nervous system yeah. back to where it needs to be. It's literally a full-time job. You know, you try to tell people they want to like be a bodybuilder. I'm like, well, you're gonna to have to try to find somewhere to make money of it because yeah. you're not gonna have a career elsewhere. Yeah. I know for me, a lot of people still in my ear, when you're gonna compete, when you can compete, but I've got a business to run. And, and how I'm, expensive is it? Like, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I mean, it depends on what you're doing and how you're eating and you know, what you're taking, because obviously it's bodybuilding, but I mean, the costs will go up. It's a huge amount and you get nothing in return if you aren't really good at it in the mm -hmm. country and if you aren't making a brand out of yourself. I think you almost have to be up there with the best in the world, you know? Oh, 100%. Like if, yeah. if you're not like a full Heath type of a person, I think you're going to yeah. battle to really yeah. make money from the sport. And, and one thing I've seen in this country is just guys don't know how to build a brand around themselves. They, they can gym hard and look good on stage, but it's like you, you can't make money off of that. You mm. can't, you know, build a business out of that. You've got to really be able to be multi-skilled and be able to do a lot of other things other than lift weights. Mm. So I think a lot of people sell themselves short in that regard. Yeah. Tell me about your shift, okay? So you were a personal trainer. Mm. Um, you know, you had worked here a little yeah. bit and a couple of other places, but then yeah. what made you shift to the online space and how, how long did it take you to become successful on the online, online space where you knew, I can go and do this full-time now? Yeah. And tell us a little bit about like the website, how it works, how people pay you, you mm. know, how you find customers. Yeah. Yeah, so I trained, I was personal trained at Pavilion for a little bit in Westville, then... Um, Obviously, got the call to come out to have a meeting with you, got the offer here. So I thought, let me try, you know, let me go for it. So it was out of my comfort zone. Um, one of the best decisions I've ever made, definitely. Completely changed me as a person. The personal training was up and down. You know, a lot of people seem to think that like it was like a, <laughs> a huge success for me. It was up and down. Beginning was tough, as always, with personal training. Then it got better. And then towards, you know, just before I decided to leave personal training, the online was quite strong. And the personal training was still a bit inconsistent. It was going a bit up and down, um, which was only my own fault. There's no other fault to that than my own. And I think I just decided at one point, you know, do I want to keep waking up to get to gym at 5 a.m. to serve someone else and only have one person in that hour? Or do I want to look at putting all my energy into something where I can have 50, 100 people and deal with them, you know, at multiple times? And I got forced into that a bit because the personal training wasn't where I wanted it to be. So it was kind of like you know, it made me make a decision. Whereas I think if the personal training was going really well, I wouldn't have stepped out to just do online. So I did get forced into a bit. Um, but yeah, the online training, it's something that it, it started slow and then all of a sudden I just started picking up momentum and picking up momentum. And then, you know, I've always been very active on social media. Um, I felt like that was a key to being in the fitness industry. You know, social media, I always thought at the beginning, you know, Instagram is free. It's not costing me a cent. I didn't have money at the beginning. All I had was a phone and Instagram. So I was like, well, let me use it. Let me use it every day. Let me build up a following. 
And then once you've built up a following and you've given them enough trust, if you now offer them a service, they're, they're going to come to you because you've built up that trust over a long time. And with everyone that comes to me, they always say, Dave, I followed you for six months. I followed for you for a year. I followed you for two years before they sign up. So online trainers in particular need to understand that, you know, you lay the groundwork for years before the person pays you. I think a lot of people, they jump onto Instagram, they think, okay, sure, I'm going to post in two months and then I'll be rocking. And it's not like that at all. It takes months of buying someone's trust and then eventually they sign up. I've had people in my inbox who inquire in like 2017 and then you see again on the DM in like 2019 and they've signed up. So it's like it takes time. And I think a lot of people expect it to happen overnight, but it's just that continuous everyday posting, being in people's faces in the right way, obviously. And um, yeah, then I got forced to do online in a way. And then I just put all my time and effort into it. And then it's just kind of grown from there. <laughs> it's amazing. Like watching you from the outside in, I'm, mm. I'm so proud of you. And really, yeah. honestly, you've done amazing because so yeah. many guys have tried it and failed. Yeah. And like big names. I mean, mm. I know guys that are really successful, um, you know, personal trainers, and they just yeah. weren't capable of, of sticking it out and making yeah. a real business of the online yeah. training. Yeah, it's quite odd because like, I'm someone that I wouldn't call myself a success in personal training, but then I've done well with online. And then you see some people are really successful with personal and they just cannot make the trans transitions online. Mm -hmm. So it, it's quite hard for me to put my finger on, you know, why that went well and why that didn't go so well. But um, I don't know. I guess maybe my traits, get, you know, went towards that more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was chatting to um, one of my managers, actually, I think it was even this morning, and we're speaking about new people coming into the fitness industry for the mm. first time. And I've got some ideas, but let's mm. hear some from you. Like if you're a new personal trainer or you're someone mm. that's wanting to come into the industry for the first time, what would you recommend they do? And how would you recommend they get started? As a personal trainer? Well, yeah, personal Any, trainer, yeah. coach, fitness. If you yeah. want to go online, in a gym, what do you I reckon? I mean, I think the first you've got to have a qualification because that's not happening too often these days. But, you know, you just need something that allows you to practice. Because I went to university for four years, but... I think if I'd just done a six month and got experience in those three other years, probably would have been in a better place. So I think if you can get so much experience, like I know when I came here, you know, Virgin Act is one level of trainers, then INF's got, you know, a whole nother level. So you're having different conversations with people, you're, you're learning different things, you, you see so much more when you're around people that are better than you. And I think personal trainers make the mistake of like, they get their qualification, and then they don't want to work for free after that. And like, you know, just get as much experience as possible. That's mm. my opinion. Like, just forget about like your pride at the beginning and what you think you should make and just learn as much as possible. Mm. Be around people that are smarter than you, work for free at things, just like immerse yourself in it. And once you've done that for a while, you know, you're going to be far further than the oak that just sat on his ass and continuously said, oh, you must pay me for this, you must pay me for this. And you're not getting any clients because you're not very good. You know what I mean? So my, my personal opinion for personal trainers is just get in front of people. Get really good at speaking to people. Because personal training is like 80% communication skills and like 20% what your actual ability is. You know what I mean? So my opinion, yeah, just get in front of people, communicate, learn how to talk to people, and then just get experience. You know, get practical hands-on experience from trainers that are better than you. You know, maybe there's a gym that will give you an internship, whatever the case may be. But that people experience and that practicality, I think, is just missing. And people don't want to go get it. They want to just be given it. So like for youngsters that will just finish matric at 18 years old, mm. go and get a six-month diploma, they qualified as a trainer now. Those guys have almost no chance of being successful if you just mm. rock up to a gym and think you're going to start getting clients. And they think they're going to make it overnight, yeah. It doesn't happen. Mm. Like you say, you need to get that experience. Mm. And my recommendation is go overseas if you can, if you're South African mm. specifically. Go yeah. earn some dollars, some pounds, some euros yeah. and get some uh, life experience, whether you're working on a cruise ship, um, mm. a yacht, uh, a gym there that'll pay you a salary to yeah. do crazy things like spinning classes, TRX <laughs> classes. You want to be getting yoga, Pilates. You need mm. experience in all the disciplines. Yeah. Go join a CrossFit gym for a while yeah. and compete yourself. That's my... Mm. That's how I learned the most. It's yeah. like doing Ironmans, getting involved in yeah. CrossFit competitions, trying out bodybuilding stuff, you know. Then you know what your body's capable Best of. Best experiences on yourself. Yeah. yeah. You'll know 
what the limits are, mm. um, you know, what your body needs, how much food, how tired do you get after the session? 100%. Because, I mean, it's easy to push someone. 100%. But you, you also don't want to be pushing someone so that they can't come back and train the next exactly. day. Exactly. Which is a big see. mistake so many people make. Yeah. And experienced trainers, like, you see them like they want to do like the craziest sessions for clients and then it's like you break them. You're not supposed to break them. You're supposed to manage them. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. And that's a thing we see so often is like a guy will come in and say, hey, I need to lose this amount of weight. And then mm. it's very easy for us as trainers to make someone lose five kgs in a month. Uh, very easy. Depleting, yeah. losing the water, losing 100%. the glycogen, you know, massive sweat sessions. Yeah. But what happens after that? That's the fitness you know, industry to a T these days. That we like, look at the success I've got with this client, but go look at the client six months later and they've put 100%. on 10 kgs, they've doubled up, they're mm. very unfit. All their joints and that are sore mm. because of what they've gone through. And their hormone cycles are completely wrecked because of how they've had to starve themselves. Yeah. So like we learn, you know, it's longevity mm. and we've got to be sort of leaders, role models, ambassadors for new trainers coming through. Mm. But the whole thing is they've got to get rid of their ego mm. and they've got to come through and learn and be like, Hey, I'm here for, mm. I know it's going to take me four or five years. Cause that's mm. the, it's like going in and yeah. getting a degree. You pay your dues, you know, the first couple of years yeah. is just listen, learn and you know, even for myself, I know when I went to Virgin Active, I just finished, com well, not finished competing, but I had been competing. And, you know, you, you have a bit of a following on social media. You think, like, you, you just got this inflated ego because you're young. You don't realize. And then I know when I came here and then saw the level of trainers here, I was like, oh, okay, let me just sit down a bit. Let me listen. You know, then you realize what caliber of trainers should be aiming for because Virgin Active, the caliber is obviously not super high. So you're not realizing what you should be doing in terms of, you know, your knowledge and stuff. So I know when I came here, it humbles you very quickly and you realize, okay, that's the level you should be aiming for. And, you know, just shut up and do your work mm -hmm. until you get there. But I think a lot of people, they don't realize, especially at the beginning, you're going to eat shit for a long time. I know a lot of people think like, you know, now they see that I've done well. It's like the beginning was so easy. But I mean, you had to give me a couple months. Yeah, we didn't pay rent. I mean, I still remember, I still remember the rest of my life. The one... A month I had no money in my account and I had to and I was still living 45 minutes away in Westville I had to get my dad to fill up my car and I had to get my mom to give me money to get through the toll so I could come tell you that I had to quit so like you know you, you're gonna go through parts where like it sucks shit mm. and you know there's gonna be parts where you're gonna quit you want to quit mm. but you know if you can just get over that and stay consistent and just push there is success for people in the industry who are good at what they do and I know when we're talking off camera, you were saying a lot of people feel it's saturated. I feel it's the opposite of that. I feel like it's never been easier to stand out in the fitness industry because so many people do it so badly. And there's such a select few trainers who are good at what they do. So I feel like it's so easy to stand out. But, you know, for people that are quite small minded and one dimensional, they're going to think, oh, by competing against 100 other trainers. But, you know, you just got to stand out. Yeah. And that's the flip side of it. Mm. It's like, it's a beautiful profession mm. and like, I highly recommend it. Yeah. If you are passionate about mm. health, fitness, yeah. and you can see yourself, you can't see yourself working in an office. Mm. I mean, what an awesome job. Uh, yeah. We are so lucky. You get to come into work mm. in a pair of shorts and you know, <laughs> some gym shoes each yeah. day. You're working out all the time. Mm. It's really, you end up being so healthy, mm. so fit. It's a, it's a, it is, it's a hard job. Like, that's not yeah. very easy. Like we were yeah. saying, you have to get up at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. You know, you're working at mm. from 5 in the morning until 7 at night a lot mm. of the time. Sometimes even weekends doing yeah. internships and those things. But mm. it's it's very rewarding. Yeah. I mean, when you change someone's life for the good. 100%. I mean, how many clients have you had? Mm. And those experiences where you take someone that's so unhealthy and you make them completely well and all-rounded and yeah. it's the mental, the physical, everything you can see there. It's a yeah. very rewarding profession. Yeah, it feels like you're adding to someone's life. You're not, I don't know, running a, a bottle store or something. You know what I'm saying? You're not mm. taking something from someone. You're giving mm. them something. And like I've seen with so many clients when they come to you and they're so shy and they're so like, you know, not disgusted, but you know, they don't like the way they look. They don't like the way they feel. They don't like the way they think. And then six months down the line, you know, the way they speak to you is different. The way they talk, the way they carry themselves. And you can just see how that's been the catalyst for them to change their life and to expand into other areas. And you see it influences their career and it's just a knock-on effect. And to be involved in that is it's super rewarding. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a job to it, me. It's very underpaid in South mm. Africa anyway. Uh, 100%. I still think we're looked down upon heavily. 
I mean, I, I don't know if I should say on camera, but I still felt like when I started, my parents looked down upon me. You know, like they didn't show me much support at the beginning and they didn't understand what I did really. And it was kind of like, it looked like I was just doing this. Like a joke get, profession. Ah, yeah. yeah. And it is looked down upon in this country. And then once I like started showing them what I was doing, you know, how much I was making, they were like, oh shit, you know, there, there's an opportunity. Yeah, you're actually really good at it. And then they slowly warmed up to it and realized that like, it's more of like a, I guess in there I was the old school, my parents are old. And it, it's more of like a new school profession, mm. you know, especially being an online trainer on social media, mm. they don't even know what social media is. So I think, yeah, as a trainer, you've got to break down that barrier to people's assumptions of who you are as a person. Because mm. I think a lot of people look down upon it. It's kind of like, oh, you couldn't do anything else, so you became a trainer. But then, you know, I know when I walked in here and in my first meeting with you, I was like, shit, this guy's sharp. You know what I mean? It's like, if you can break down that initial barrier for someone, they'll immediately respect you. And, so. and that's what I realized. I was like, mm. it, the people that don't want to pay, they're not successful people, 100%. you know, most of the time. Yeah. Or they're uneducated on what a trainer can actually give you. Because you get a personal trainer and you get personal trainers. Huh, you definitely. know, and then if you look at in the hierarchy of things, mm. it's like for me with my businesses, what do I need? I need a lawyer. I need an accountant. I need a coach. Exactly. And when I train, yeah. I love, I get one of my coaches or one of my staff to come yeah. through and watch me like exactly. as much as I can because yeah. I'll never have a, as good a session doing it on my own. I would love to have someone. a personal trainer, I must say. It's I've hired best. online trainers, you know, other ones to help facilitate my training, but I would love to have a personal trainer. Yeah, I think it's the best thing you can have. Like I always try to tell people, I get like business guys come to me and I'm, I check in with them and I say how things go, oh, you know, I haven't ate my meals properly because of business, this, that, that. So I'm like, bro. You're just as important as the business. If you are fit, healthy, thinking clearly, you've got lots of energy, that's going to, you know, have a knock on effect to your business. But if you're lethargic and you never eat and you're tired, I mean, it just doesn't make sense, you know. So I think people don't realize what an investment in themselves can do for everything else around their life. You know, they just think, oh, the trainer's five grand a month. But what happens if that leads you to get 20 grand more sales in your mm. business or whatever the case may be? Oh. I would challenge and I'd openly put it on camera now like anybody mm. any wealthy person out there that can afford my rates would take mm. me and pay me what I'm asking if you don't make more money within a month you can keep your money 100%. You know, because I agree with you yeah. so much so to say that if you are training well and you're healthy and you've got that complete balance on there you're going to mm. make more money yourself if you're mm. an entrepreneur if you're a business person you will make more money 100%. definitely and especially some of these guys are under so much stress and they never have a release, like Jim's the best stress relief. So maybe now their relationship with their wife's better, the relationship with the kids is better. They're waking up happy in the morning, they're not like shit, this but is also, gonna be a grind Think day. of the routine that a gym does, okay? So you've got mm. to wake up at a specific time, you've got to have planned your day out because mm. if you're gymming and if you've got a personal trainer, they're not gonna not let you eat well. Yeah. So you've got to plan those meals. 100%. You know? And we, we do that. We plan mm. the meals strategically so that your insulin is released at the right levels, mm. your hormones get nicely balanced, and mm. you have consistent energy throughout yeah. the day. Exactly. We plan your sleep because how important is sleep for recovery? Just as important. So now we're forcing, yeah. we're forcing the right behavioral mm. patterns for exactly. you to be the best person you can exactly. be every single day. Yeah. You know? And I think that's, um, that's like it's this misconception of what, what is, why do I need a personal trainer? Mm. Yeah, but there's so much more to it. When the you right person will train to be far more than someone says squat like that. And I think people think like, oh, I can train. I go into a gym. But it's like, okay, I go to um, court. It doesn't make me a lawyer. You know what I mean? I've sat in court and listened to things. It doesn't make you a lawyer. Mm. But there is, like you say, a huge difference between a personal trainer and a real personal trainer. So people just need to find the right one. Because I find a lot of people have had a bad experience and never go back. Yeah. And, you know, I've had people come to me who inquire and before they've even been my client for a day, they're already saying that I'm going to be a negative process like they had with someone else. Mm. Oh, Dave, this online trainer did this to me, this to me. And I'm like, okay, but you haven't been through this process with me yet. So maybe just try with me or trust that I'm better than that and then judge me. So I think it's, it's a lot to do with yeah, bad personal trainers as well, doing a bad job and then people are just like, that's a waste. I think they've got to change the curriculum. Mm. I mean, if you think of, and it's like the respect thing. So let's go back to your parents. Sorry to throw that in the no, box. No, 100%. Like, if you had had to study for seven years to do this, yeah. you would be looked at totally different. Yeah. It's, it's the six-month slapdash qualification that you get with yeah, it. It's unfortunate. And you can learn the knowledge-based stuff 
pretty much in six months. Mm. But everything else that goes with it yeah. is going to take you another six and a half years. Yeah, like, so it's got to be, you've got to mm. look at it like that. It's like a seven year investment, you know, of True. learning. Yeah. Before you're good enough to actually yeah. take responsibility because you're taking responsibility for someone else's well-being, mm. you know, which is, should be the, the top of the hierarchy. 100%. Yeah. How, let's change up a little bit, Chuck. Mm. How, um, how easy is it for someone else? Okay, let's take another trainer to, mm. to make a transition to online and the online space. You know, what is it going to really take other than having a good Instagram following or good social media network? Yeah. And what do you think? I think you've got to wear so many hats. Like, you know, writing diet plans and training plans is one thing, but making sure that it's the right type of plan for that person without ever meeting them. You know, you've got to be able to run a business, which a lot of trainers can't do. They don't understand the business side set. You've got to be good on social media. You've got to handle your finances as well. I'm probably... <laughs> You know, I made mistakes at the beginning with finances. I think a lot of young people do. Um, that was my biggest lesson probably over the past two years. Just get a hold of finances. Um, you've got to be able to influence people through a message in WhatsApp. You've got to be able to be compassionate. You've got to have empathy. You know, it's, you've got to wear so many hats. I know for personal training, it's your face to face. So it's, it's a slightly different dynamic. But for online, it's a very different business structure and model to face to face. Not to say that one's better than the other, not at all. But um, it's, I think, yeah, I've seen people struggle with the transition. And I think if your personal train doing really well, you mustn't just all of a sudden go like, oh, I want to work less. Because that's the assumption, you're going to work less. Let me go do online. Maybe try to transition slowly into it. Understand it's going to be a long transition. Because like I said, you've got to buy that trust from people. It's not that you can just start posting on Instagram and you're going to get clients. And like you said, like, when you went online like last year, how busy were you? You were working ridiculous. Mm. Before you hired in the extra yes, help. Because yeah. you've had to make it a business now. Yeah, it got yeah. that big. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy way out. I think a lot of trainers think, oh, you know, personal training is not working or I'm tired of this. I'm going to do online. It's an easy way out. It's not if you don't do it well. You know what I mean? Is it it's, passive income? <laughs> you got it in every sense you make, you know what I mean? It's not something that's just going to fall into your lap. I think, and you know, the big thing is... I think that's a misconception. Mm. People are like, hey, it's online and people are going to just buy these programs and they'll, you know, yeah, buy it over and over again. It's very it's different. Passive income, mm. you know. And like, you know, I'm involved in a system where I can see what's happening in other trainers and it's like, you know, not many people do well at it. You know, that's my shock because I took it pretty quickly. Not that I was amazing but it took it pretty quickly and I see other trainers who are pretty credible who are continuously struggling with it so it's you know you've really got to get all your ducks in a row and know what you're doing and and know how to give away a lot of information I think that's the big thing is that give away all your information on social media show people what you do don't try like think you have secrets that you need to hide like just show people because you could tell someone exactly what to do but they'll still hire you because it's you you know they I was listening to a book this morning when I was walking. It's, you know, people hire, you know, why you do something, not what you're doing. Mm. Which book? Um, Simon Sinek. Oh, he's Started brilliant. Why, yeah. yeah. So I've been listening. This is like my 21st book for the year now. Super. Yeah, so I've been grinding. I uh, just love yeah. listening to books now. What do you or use? Reading. Audible. Yeah, Audible or I read them. Mm -hmm. Depends. Um, but, you know, he's made complete sense where he said people hire you for who you are. You know, they don't. Right. He wrote another one recently. It's called Leaders Eat Last. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Have you heard it? No, I haven't. Do I'm that one next. Yeah. It's, it's really good. Yeah. But um, it just made complete sense to me. Like, you know, they, people can hire any trainer they want. They know what a trainer does. But they hire you as a person. So if you don't come to the party in terms of you, you know, showing people why you do what you do, communicating with them, they're not going to hire you. Mm. So it's like you've got to get yourself out there. Can't hide behind an Instagram post. You know? And t what did bodybuilding do for you? Like, and tell us a little bit about mm. which uh, shows you did, which yeah. events. Like, you know, how, yeah. how did it change your life, mm. good and bad? Yeah. So, I was in university at the time. It was in my third year of studies, I think. When I, yeah, I studied in my third year, and I mean, I competed in my third year of university in honors year. Um, and like at that age, I thought, you know, I need to get noticed now in the industry. I'm about to go working in it. Like you know, what's the way, best way for me to get noticed? So I just decided, let me compete, let me get in the best shape and people will be like, shit, look at that guy. You know what I mean? So it was the right thing for me at that time, but it came at a huge cost. I don't think people realize um, I'm very like 
tunnel vision. Once I decide I'm going to do something, it's, it's all or nothing. Not all or nothing, but for that, it was, I'm going to go as hard as I can. I mean, I was dead. I was, you know, it was hectic. And I was doing it while I was studying. And it worked because I got noticed. And people, know, you know, they knew me for being like crazy lean because I looked like a skeleton. But what a lot of people don't understand is, okay, if they know you for being crazy lean, it doesn't mean they're going to respect you as a coach. There's a huge difference between, oh, you can get yourself in shape and being a good coach. So, you know, yes, I had a following, but I wasn't going to make money off of that because I hadn't shown people what I can do. It was just, I got noticed. And having attention is useless if you can't make a business out of it, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it took me a long time to recover from after comp, big mm -hmm. time. You know, I had a bad, bad relationship with um, food. I had a bad relationship with my self-image. Um, it was a real yo-yo for like six months to a year after competing because you know once you see yourself you know as lean as possible you're always thinking about that you're always comparing yourself to that you're always talking down upon yourself and then you you know you restricted yourself so heavily with food then and just becomes like this negative cycle and it took me a long time to recover after that so that's why when people tell me you're going to compete again i'm like bro okay. you know it took a lot out of me to do that and um but it did form the basis of how I do my business now. You know, I was heavily restricted myself, bad relationship with food. Then I got out of it and I know what a huge struggle that was and how debilitating it was. And now I see so many people, not to the same extreme of competing, but they're struggling with their relationship with food. They're so desperate to get in shape, but they, they can only get in shape for eight weeks and then rebound back. And it's like this endless yo-yo cycle. So that's formed the basis to what I do now. You know, I was in such a bad place and I changed my life. So now I can see all those other people in this mm. bad place. And I'm like, yeah, I can show you what to do. And I know how rewarding it will be. So it's, it's you know, it's, it was a hard experience to go through, but it's formed the basis of my business now. So what do you mean um, you had a bad relationship with food? Just explain that a little bit. Mm. So, I mean, <laughs> I wasn't as, I guess you could say, educated and experienced as I am now back then, you know, um, you know, I ate clean foods to compete. You know, you don't cheat, you don't do this, you don't, it's just boring, monotonous, and you get into amazing shape doing that. So then you get into this mindset that that's the only way you can get in shape. But obviously after comp, you're gonna eat stuff you actually enjoy. And obviously you're gonna gain weight because it's after comp, it's very normal, you're probably gonna eat more than what you normally eat. So then it becomes this continuous like mental battle where like, you're convinced you have to eat those foods you hate to get in shape. You can never enjoy your food. So you keep bouncing between the two and then you end up binging. You know, I went through a terrible phase where I would literally like, after training, I'd be like going mad in my head and I'd go to the shops and I'd buy like the most unreal amount of shit, go home, eat it. And then you get to the end of it and you're like, oh, now I'm gonna get fat again. So then you go back to restricting yourself. And it's just like this vicious cycle of going up and down. And people don't realize that can get in shape by enjoying the foods you like. So it took me a long time to become more flexible and to like take a step back and realize it's just about calorie control. You know what I mean? So that was a huge game changer for me where you realize, okay, you don't have to eat all these crazy foods that you hate. You know, you can use moderation. You can include things that come for it, still get in shape. So that for me was like, fuck, this is like a new life. You know what I mean? So that's why I try to show clients, I try to show people now that you can eat fruit, you can eat a banana, it's yeah, not going to make you fat. You can still go eat burgers if you want, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You can still have a milkshake if you want. You can still do anything you want as long as you're just smart about it. But don't demonize food. That's when huge problems come where it's like, I can't have that. Mm -hmm. Because that burger isn't making you fat, you know? It's what are you eating throughout the day that's leaving you in a surplus that's making you fat. So it just becomes that relationship with food is a huge problem in today's you know, everyday life with people. And, and did you feel, ever feel like depressed or anxious or? Oh yeah, I went, I yeah. think there's a lot of people, especially like bodybuilders, mm. but especially like young women now, I've seen so many of them struggling mm. with their relationship with food. You mm. know, you've got a big craze going on in the schools with um, anorexia and, yeah, um, you know, bulimia. Mm. And it's just this competition between young women specifically, but young mm. men too, but more so in yeah. the young woman. And like, what advice could you give, um, if any, to be able to help? Yeah. How did you, cause I mean, you went through it. Mm. How, how did you sort of fix that mental, um, 
to, how did you get out of that low and mm. and start appreciating food and seeing it differently again? Yeah, fuck. I think you get to the point where you're just so desperate. You're like, you know, you hit such a, a low, such a rock bottom. You're like, dude, you need to change. Something has to change. So it's hard for me to give someone advice to avoid it because I fell into it and then had to be like, you know, rock bottom in order for me to think this can't be the only way. You know, because eventually I said to myself, this can't be the only way you can get in shape. I was thinking like, this is impossible. You know, you, there's no ways that you have to eat these crazy bland foods for the rest of your life to be in shape. So that for me was like, something must change. So then I started doing my own research and, you know, forming my own ideas about nutrition and trying and seeing. And, but, um, you know, as for these girls that are in school, I think it's, you know, a problem with social media. You know, social media is a massive contributor to that because I don't think these girls would be doing that if it was just everyday life. It's all about how many likes can you get, how many comments can you get. And unfortunately, if you're still in school, you're 16, maybe 18 years old, there's no way you've got the mental maturity to be, you know, an adult about it. So, you know, these girls are super vulnerable and, you know, you know it's creating such a, an effect on them to be worrying about your, you know, what foods you're eating at that age. Um, obviously, you don't want someone to be obese, but I mean, you know, being so obsessive about your food and, you know, throwing up and restricting yourself and stuff is scary. It's scary. I think they need to educate girls at that age because that's the big thing I've seen in working with clients is like people just know nothing about nutrition. You know, they, all they know is what they've read in a magazine and a magazine's not there to educate you. It's there to sell a, a copy. So, you know, if a magazine can say something and they sell 100 magazines, they're going to say it, not necessarily understanding the implications of it. But if a magazine tried to educate someone and sold one magazine, well, they wouldn't have a company. So I think the big thing is just the lack of basic education or nutrition is shocking, which, you know, I don't know how they're going to fix it, especially in this country, but just people are unaware, completely mm -hmm. unaware. Yeah. Well, I think um, parents have a big responsibility mm. to sort of notice that in their children. Yeah. And also parents that went through it themselves, mm. the likelihood of your children going through something like that is mm. just going to be higher, you know. It's like if you're an alcoholic, as then you have to just mm. warn your kids on that you have to yeah. be like hey this alcohol didn't do good for me mm. you know it's caused a whole bunch of problems in my life maybe don't drink yeah try something else but also i found in working with some younger people it's that the parents are putting those ideas into them they've got this old square thing in nutrition mm. so the kid grows up seeing oh when mom wants to in shape she restricts herself heavily you know i've, I've seen the same yeah thing. and so they do it and then you know i still see it where like friends parents know what i do and the kids know what I do, they're my age, and then their parents go on like heavy restrictions to get in shape. And I'm like, you know, what am I been preaching the whole time? Like, guys, you know, wake up. You know what I mean? But I think it's a, it's a huge problem all over the world. Mm. It's like... Just, I think guys like us can mm. make a big difference. Yeah. And like I really encourage those people or mm. anybody that needs help to mm. reach out to people like us, you mm. know, and get the right advice. Mm. Problem is, I find with people is that they keep doing that dumb restrictions, fads, until they're like broken. The only time they reach out is like once they physically are, you know, to shit. Mm. <laughs> and it's unfortunate because I've had so many people come to me who are like, it seems like I'm the last option. It's like they've tried every fad and then it's like, okay, Dave, all the fads didn't work. I thought they might not work. Now I'll come to you because I've seen that you actually do things the right way. It's like people... I we see that in with bio all the time. Like yeah. a guy will be suffering with a sore shoulder for this many years oh, and then 100%. land up and you say, oh, I've been suffering. And like, how long? Well, three years. I'm like, why did you wait so long? Well, I tried this, I tried that, I mm. tried that, you know? I think, I don't get it, especially with the fads, you mm. know? People know it's going to leave them worse off than when they began. But like, they just, they convince them maybe this one will work. Or they're like, oh, I've got a wedding in two months. I just need to look good on that day. So people just need to get out of this crazy mindset because it's such a yo-yo. Like I can't imagine anything worse than gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight. You're, you know, it's just people are just left so desperate and vulnerable and they keep bouncing from one shit to the next. And it's just like, it's tiring. You know, and then people come to me and I'm like, you know, why did you wait? Like, same as you. Guys try to fix their shoulder themselves because they think they're no better or they got a knee surgery and they old school mentality yeah we've yeah. got a responsibility too of asking people like how do you feel 
you know, versus judging how do you look. Oh, 100%. And um, then 100%. doing specific health checks, you know, yeah. instead of like body exams. Yeah. Um, and I think once mm. that changes, people's whole perception mm. of the experience will change as well around it. Mm. I know for me, some clients are like, Dave, I haven't lost any weight this month. And I'm like, okay, but what have you done? You eat some amazing food. The first time you've been happy about your food, you're still exercising every day, your performance is its best ever, you sleep well, you've got energy. I'm like, just get over the scale, like it will move in the right direction at the right time. But like, there's so much more to a body transformation or getting in shape mm. than a number on a scale or how you're looking or this, you know, people are very one dimensional. Yeah, you know? I think like if you're happy, um, you'll look at yourself differently oh, and you'll definitely. sort of accept your body. Yeah. I think that was also a big mm. thing that you must have gone through mm. is that like, because you're not nearly as big or as ripped as you were when you were standing on stage as a mm. bodybuilder, but you'll have to look at yourself in the mirror and accept mm. that, you know? It's like a transition of, mm. I completely am happy with the way I look yeah. because I feel good and I'm yeah. healthy. And like I always tell my clients, especially coming in for the first time, I'd say looking good is a side effect of being healthy. Mm. So you need to be well line. first, you <laughs> yeah. know, and um, the, the looks would come, but let's not mm. measure it on that because what that's going to do is put unnecessary pressure on you. Mm. And then if you don't see your weight dropping in three or four weeks, you're going to start getting despondent. Mm. You're going to start missing sessions. You give up on something yeah. like that, you know, and there's so much to it. Like, you know, you could have put on five kgs of muscle and lost yeah, the five kgs of fat. And you all keep, sorts you of know, there's all sorts in. of things yeah. to factor in. Yeah. I always try to tell people, it's like rather focus on the system and journey to get you in shape. Mm. That's what you must focus on. Don't stop focusing on this end goal that you've made up in your head. Like, because if you're not loving what you do every day, that end goal is never going to happen. Yeah. You know? Or make a goal like, if you've never run 5Ks, let's make that a goal. Yeah. Or if you want to climb a mountain somewhere, let's make that exactly. a goal. Exactly, you know? yeah. And um, specifically with guys that are in their adulthood now and mm. maybe have children coming on or grandchildren even, mm. it's always lovely to give them the idea of, hey, you can go play with your kids, 100%. you know, or go have a game of touch rugby exactly. and you're not going to tear a hamstring. Yeah, exactly. Just improve someone's quality of life. I think that's the big thing. But um, yeah, it blows my mind how willing people, how oh, I did it. You know, how willing you are to sacrifice your own happiness and, and you know, just day-to-day -day life to just to look good. Mm. It's just like, come on, guys. But I know for myself, I went through a, a huge phase of personal development where, you know, I was reading books, I was listening to podcasts. It was all about let me get my mind fed instead of going through the same cycle because I knew that my mind wasn't in the right place. So you can't just sit back and think, shit, you know, everything will work out. You've got to invest in your mind because that's controlling everything. And now still, you know, personal development every day forms a huge base of my life. Yeah. I think if you, there's a book I read, it's called The Archetypes of Man. Mm. And it's a fantastic book because you realize that you're not the only ones who have gone through and experienced what you experienced. Yeah. But you just did it in a different way. Your, yeah. your outlet to entertain your ego was bodybuilding. Mm. And someone else's may be something yeah. else. And that journey of like self-growth mm. is something we all have to go through. Yeah. Um, and it's just that some people get lost and caught in it longer than others. Definitely. And, you know, it just maybe does take one person to help you out of that rut 100%. and onto a whole new path, which 100%. just opens up doors of opportunities. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's mm. always good about mingling with well-minded well, like people. Mm. 100%. And those one person can just change your life in get a massive way. Get into a room way. where you're the dumbest, then you're going to improve your life, definitely. And yeah. reading and listening to podcasts, like you say, I, mean, I wish I'd started that sooner. Dude, yeah, those things are life-changing. And a book, let's be honest, doesn't cost so much. Mm. A podcast is generally all free. Like, you know, things are at your fingertips now to change your life. But people are just, they're happy not to do it. A lot of people are just comfortable. And, you know, it, 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 nothing frustrates me more than seeing someone and they're living their life at like a two out of 10 and it could be at like a nine. Mm. And it's just like, I just want to go hit them. Cause I'm like, you know, you, you have so much stuff at your fingertips. You could hire a trainer that can completely change your life, but you're just choosing to just sit and do nothing. And I'm like, you have so much more in you that you're just not tapping into. It's like, you know, it's, I know how much better I feel once I've improved my life. And it's just like, people need to wake up and realize that they have so much opportunity that they can create. But unfortunately people, aren't willing to get up and do something about it yeah we were talking a little bit about routine and how mm. routine is so important mm. for you and i and i like highly recommend it for everybody yeah.
give us a bit about your daily routine and, yeah. and maybe include some of your meals. What's your yeah. favorite meal, go-to meals? I mean, yeah. during the week, do you have a set standard or do you just eat pretty much whatever mm. you feel like? It's actually quite funny because I was saying, oh, you know, personal training, I have to get up and get you at five. But now I wake up at four. You know, I found that, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of clients during the day. I'm speaking to people. I'm speaking to people who work for me. And it's a huge distraction because I can't actually do what my job is, which is making plans. So what I do now is I wake up at four and I work from four to six, just like uninterrupted. I know no one's going to message me. I know there's no social media and nothing. So that four to six is where I get a lot of work done. I know it sounds very short, but I'm so much more productive in that four to six than like four hours somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I work four to six. Then I go for a walk for an hour, six to seven. Always listen to a book or a podcast, breakfast, chill a bit. And then I'll work. What will you eat for breakfast generally? Oh man. You guys don't realize what I eat now. As long as I can account for things, you know, then I eat it. So, you know, anything I want, I'll eat, but just control what I'm eating. So I'll account for it, I'll add up the calories, I'll do this, do that. But like I said, I've gone through phases like lockdown, I didn't track calories for two months. It was, let me just eat what I want. And I've been doing this quite a while now that I know what my limits are. You know, I know when to reel things in, when I can be a bit more flexible. But I mean, I love cereal, I love eggs on toast, I love bacon and eggs. It's, it's really what I feel like that, mm. that week. But I know when I'm a bit more structured, I'll have one eating plan that I eat for the whole week. And then the next week, it's a new one, a new one, new one. I just find it cheaper to buy everything mm. at once. It's easy to make the same meals in a day. But You don't have any theories at the moment with like a fasting or a fats or a keto or yeah. it's a pretty much you have balanced meals. Do you think about adding a protein, a fat and a carb in your meal? So when I make my diet, it's just what I want to eat and let's be sensible with it and let me fit it into my goal. Mm -hmm. So what's my calorie target, you know what I mean? But in terms of I must have fats at this time and carbs at that time, I don't care about it. I just want to enjoy what I'm eating and I'll train and if I look the way I want to look, I'm happy with myself now. So I don't have to look a certain way, then I'm happy. You know what I mean? I, I don't overanalyze diets. I don't get this you know, I've got to have this nutrient timing and I've got to fast here and do that. I just want to do stuff that makes me happy. So for me, I'm very flexible. People don't realize how flexible I am when it comes to nutrition, mm -hmm. which is the complete opposite to, you know, three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. So I just have so much freedom in my food and that provides me happiness. That provides me that I'm good at my job. You know, it's, it serves a different purpose now, I guess. Yeah. And are you trying to eat healthy foods when you choose those foods? Yeah, I mean, I don't eat like a pig, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But, you know, I don't... It's, when I mean healthy, I mean like real wholesome food. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. So, when, like you were mentioning eggs, I mean, you're yeah. putting in like oats and you've got fruits yeah, and veg. Yeah, and same with all my clients, you know. You know, a lot of my clients only post like the really cool things they get in their diets, things that are like, you know, they might have wine gums or something, and mm. people post it and people think I only feed my clients, you know, sweets. It's not like that. I'm feeding you 80% whole foods. I'm just giving you 20% of like really cool shit because mm. that's going to make sure you can adhere to that plan, you can stay on that plan for years which is obviously the solution to your mm -hmm. problem. Um, and it's the same with me. I'm eating 80% whole foods, but I'm being flexible. I'm enjoying other things to make sure I can stay on track. But a lot of people, they're either 100% not flexible or you know 100% flexible. There's no like in between or middle ground. It's either you're strict, 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 or you're just eating anything. Mm. So you know, I think I've just identified that people need the middle ground and that's what I provide now. You know? mm. I've taken you off track your routine. So after breakfast? Oh yeah. So so yeah, I wake up four AM, work four to six. Um yeah, breakfast. You do the walk six, with a book seven, and then yeah. breakfast. Then breakfast, um, seven to eight. Then I'll usually I have a I'll go on WhatsApp then and check in with clients. So I've scheduled check ins with clients. So certain people on Monday, certain Tuesdays, so on and so on. So I'll message them, send out all of those things to get the ball rolling. Um, and then I'll carry on working on plans. Um, for the morning, I'm, I'm way more productive in the mornings. You know, I think some people, they can handle afternoons, evenings better. Mornings is my time. I know I'm very productive then. So I'll keep working on plans. I'll talk to clients throughout the day. So I'm communicating throughout the day with them. That goes to like 6.37 seven at night. You know, understanding what did you struggle with last week? Mm -hmm. Anything you can improve on. Just, you know, form a relationship, form a partnership. Um, and then generally I'll try to train like midday one o'clock, two o'clock maybe. 
Um, recently, I've been doing Instagram Lives, so that starts at 5 p.m. If I'm not doing Instagram Live, I go for another walk. Um, and then, yeah, afternoons, late afternoons, I'm not working on computers. It's, it's just impossible for me. I know that my work's going to be sloppy then because I'm tired. I've woken up at 4, you know what I mean? So, and then dinner, and then I'm in bed by like 8, 8.30 now, yeah. It's but, a good routine. Yeah, but I was saying we were making a video yesterday actually for content, you know. People are like, you know, why do you wake up so early? But in my opinion, you know, I go to sleep half past eight. If I stay up to half past ten, what am I doing between half past eight and half past ten? Nothing. Mm. I'm watching TV. It's like dead space for me. So why not wake up early? I put those two hours in the morning where I'm going to be far more productive doing something and use that as now my best hours of the day. So I think a lot of people are very happy to like let those dead hours extend till midnight, then wake up at 7 a.m. And it's like, when you just move that dead weight, wake up really early, you could literally start your own another business if you wanted in that time. You know, you can listen to a book, you can read, like utilize that time. That's yeah. True. I think as long as you're getting your eight hours sleep, I'm a big believer in that. You mm. know, some people need a bit less, some people maybe even more, but 100%. you know, you structure that routine in a way where around your sleep. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't believe in napping during the day. It's just something yeah. I know it works for a lot of people, but mm. I'm like, if I get, if I'm also, I love waking up at 4 a.m. Mm. Right now my routine's 5 a.m., but that's because I'm going to bed later with the, with the, the newborn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so that's a bit of a challenge now. Yeah. But, you know, I love the 4 a.m. sleep at 8 a.m. That's a yeah. good routine. And I find the morning's the best time of the day. Like, I love the sunrise. I just yeah. love the time of the day. Exactly. Like, you know, it's, exactly. it's the prettiest time of the day, you know, mm. for me. Like here in South Africa with the dolphins coming past and, you know, mm. if you're in the bush, you got the birds and it's, it's it really is just a, a, huge a portion. special part of, of, the, yeah, of the day. Yeah, yeah. I think people, are, you know, and it blows my mind if people say, oh, I just can't wake up early. Like, that's bullshit, man. You can wake up early. You know, get up out of bed and get up. You do it every morning at seven. Mm. If you just went to bed early, you could do it at four. Yeah. So, like, I don't buy the excuse of people. And I think people, are, yeah, they're just, like I've said before, unwilling to get up and do something, you know, to change their life. And you see it now where... You could only train in your home and people just like, you know, stopped. Like, what's the point? You know, training should be more than just like, oh, I'm going to the gym to look good. It should be like a basis of your life. You know, it makes you feel so much better about yourself. And um, you brush your teeth, you sleep, you train, you go to yeah, do it. Exactly. It's part of it, you know? And like, you know, I myself, you know, I'm typical gym, you know, bunny with just weights, but like, could do, only do body weight exercise, but I still did them, mm. you know, and um, you it's don't. Like yesterday, for example, I was in the gym the whole day, but I did not gym. Yeah. And I just didn't want to be indoors anymore. So instead of doing a gym session, I got home and took my dog for a run. Exactly. 45 minutes, yeah. that's all it was. We did a, like, I don't know, five or mm. six K run, but yeah. it's just about moving consistently, 100%. you know, consistency is mm. a big thing. Oh, it's the biggest thing. And I think the problem is the people who need movement the most are the ones who aren't moving as you know as with anything but I feel like they don't realize what consistent movement will do for them mentally and you know just to get them over that initial hurdle and get them doing things consistently then they're doing it for life but um, you know if you don't do something you don't realize the benefits of it so I think a lot of people they need to stop making excuses and start because a lot of people were saying before lockdown, oh, you know, I'm just waiting until next week to start or next month because that'll be a perfect time. Then lockdown happened. Oh, no, I'll wait for lockdown to be over. And it's like, how long are you going to keep waiting to change your life? You know, you're going to keep waiting and keep putting it off till your birthday or your holiday or you're going to just decide, fuck, I want to live a better life now. You know, I think what's... it's the best time right now Yeah. with um, everybody learning about what the immune system is, how important mm. that is and the 100%. contribution that movement and you know, physical exercise in general, um, you know, does to that. So mm. if we can help people now, I mean, what would you say? What's the message? How do people reach out? How do they get involved? And Yeah. Well, I mean, most people seem to find me through Instagram. It's at Dave Watkins. Um, you know, in all our client surveys, it seems like everyone's coming from Instagram. So that's probably the best place to go. My website link is there. There's so much free content out there. Um, like I tell all people, like before you decide to sign up to me, please watch my stuff understand what my message is because if you sign up i expect you to relate with that message well give us an example like if i had to sign up today what would my journey be in that sign up procedure yeah so you'd register then we send you like this 25 um question um questionnaire and that just provides me with as you know as much information as possible and there's questions in there that i know that i need the answers to so you know it's 
it's hard to say, but you know, there are things that I know are important and I need those details. Then I'll create a training plan and a diet plan and um, you know, we take things from there. Obviously, assess your body when you start. You know, there's photos and stuff like that. And then we go on a journey from there. But it's not something that's like, you know, obviously there's some rules that govern it, but I'm super flexible because every single person is different. And like I've said this before, like I've had a lot of clients now, I've never duplicated a diet plan. You know, my clients get four diet plans per month. I've never, ever copied one to another client. I've done every single one, one by one, since I started. So like, that's what I feel people deserve, and I know people respond better to that. And I'm sure, you, you, know, you know, in this industry, like, people are very quick to cut corners and same thing for this person, same thing for that person. But as you know, with dealing with personal clients, everyone's different. And with gyms being closed now, mm. does that restrict the people that can come and join you for, you know, on your online training? Or? No, so we still, obviously, home-based sessions um, prescribe whether you've got body weight, bands, dumbbells, barbells, whatever you've got, we cater for it. Um, and then I'm doing Instagram lives. I was doing them every night. Now it's three times a week because my body was getting a bit tender. But those are for free. I just join me for half an hour, body weight circuits, it's free. Like you don't have to pay anything. You know, I just wanted people to start moving, like just get up. People are always complaining it's expensive. People are always saying they don't have the time. Now you're, you know, you're at the point where you do have the time <laughs> and it's free and I'm there with you. So there's no excuse. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Dave. Anything else? <laughs> no. I thought Dugan, I was me something. No, no. Bri, thanks so much for coming. No, I appreciate um, it. It's, it's just... been super seeing you again. Yeah. And um, I'm just like, I'm so happy to see someone mm. that's become so successful because you really have. Like, mm. you know, and you're going to, it's, I can't wait to see in another two years where you are. Yeah. So. It's... No, but like I said, like this place molded me. Like I was speaking to my girlfriend last night. So I was like, I get to go IMF tomorrow. Like that was the place that like changed me because you guys are doing things the right way. And, you know, everyone here is, really good at what they do and it just raises your standards and like you helped me as much as possible while I was here you know when I was in trouble and stuff financially and like it just like you say a trainer can help someone change their life like this establishment helped me change my life so no man pleasure's all mine thanks so much bro appreciate it sweet